Well, good morning, guys. Y'all ain't gonna believe this. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Four Boys Little Homestead Slash. Four Boys Play. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. I just come out here about a week or so ago. Well, I've been out here a lot more often than a week or so ago, but I ain't really paid no attention to the cauliflower. I checked it about a week or so ago real good, and it was just some little bitty heads down in there, and I'm like, well, we may not make none this spring. So if we done got up here warm days and warm nights for the last about seven days. So I wanted to show y'all that you can grow cauliflower in the south in the spring. But this video here is gonna be a little messed up because today's very windy and I'm having to wear this little microphone. Well, I come out here with my microphone and got set up and started my video. And I guess about the time I started, the batteries went dead. Well, the only way you know the battery's dead on this thing, if you steady looking down here and seeing this little blue light blink. Well, needless to say, I didn't know it until I went in the house to download the video. So I'm gonna give y'all a close up shot again of the cauliflower like I said this is amazing cauliflower I cut a head while ago and I'll show y'all me cutting that either I'll do a speak over or we'll mix it in the video somehow <laughs> but I just wanted to show y'all this cauliflower because as hot as it is once it starts loosening up I have to harvest it and I didn't want to harvest it without showing you that you can grow some cauliflower in the spring in the south. So let's take a look at the cauliflower first and then we'll talk about it. So this first one right here, you can see it's about four inches in diameter. This is where the one y'all be seeing shortly that I just cut a while ago. And that one right there I'm gonna say is about five to six inches in diameter. And guys, this amazing cauliflower, they say it only gets 10 inches anyway. So these could be cut right now. You really don't mind how small they are. If you want one to eat, you can cut it. But you for sure want to cut them if you see them start opening it up. Now this little fella right here ain't doing so good. And you'll see what I mean by opening up. See how it's not tight, it's loosening up. That in there ain't about two and a half inches in diameter. So that in there will get cut here in the next day or so, even though it ain't gonna be much bigger. Then there's another one. It's four and a half, close to four and a half inch diameter. Now this was supposed to be in all my cauliflower on this end, and my Brussels sprouts down there on that end. But planting them out, I guess, I grabbed the wrong pack and we got Brussels sprouts. Now the Brussels sprouts, you can see, is just now starting to make Brussels sprouts on them. So that's why I planted them out here in the outside garden this year instead of my raised bed because I want to leave them out here no matter how hot it gets. I just want to watch them and see what they do. And they'll be out here out of my way. And they all look just like that. Just now making. Then we come down here, we got two or three more cauliflower. We got a big head right there. That one right there is probably around seven inches in diameter. And then we got another one right there. Now how I got them mixed up and got them down here, I don't know. But a few days ago, there was one right here that I harvested and eat. And then the rest of them is Brussels sprouts. You can see this in here is making a little more Brussels sprouts down here on the bottom, getting a little bigger than the one on the other end. But this is the only one that's doing that. The rest of them is just now starting to pop up where you can see them. So while we out here, there's my cantaloupe. We look at the outside garden, it's starting to rain now. 
I thought I was going to have to pull them cantaloupe up. I planted them out and it was way too cold. But once this heat come, they finally started, started growing and got some blooms on them. Yeah, that messed up row over there. That was supposed to have been regular broccoli. And guys, the frost got it. Some didn't come up. So I went down through there and seeded collard greens. And what broccoli is mixed in there ain't making nothing. Now over there was where my taters, y'all seen that video of me digging the taters? They were just looking terrible, terrible, as Colton said. So we dug them. And I planted that in pink eye purple holes. That way if we want to have some fresh peas. If we don't, it makes a good ground cover. But it's been the rain. So now we finna start the voiceover, guys. I don't know how this is gonna work out, but right here we're looking at the Cherokee tomato. Y'all can see it's got a few tomatoes already on it. These tomatoes really started jumping after we started getting that warm weather. The next one's up here is the red snappers. Some of them that come from Haas Tool, Sakata is the breeder of them. You can see they got a few little tomatoes coming on. That there is hooked behind that spline, I think is what I was saying. I need to just remove it. Yes, he's between my string. You can see they got some little tomatoes on them, making more blooms. This one down here has got a pretty good tomato on it. It's about a two and a half inch diameter tomato over there. And this there's the red snapper. Next up right here is going to be our hossinators. This is the one me and Miss Lippy and Mr. Buddy's in a little competition growing. And all of y'all can join along if you'd like to see if you can grow one bigger than us. This here's the hyacinators. I got four right here. And I got two planted off somewhere else. So I got a little advantage over Miss Lippy. She's only got one hyacinator plant and I got six. So if she beats me, she's going to well deserve it. Hello, Miss Lippy and Mr. Buddy. Hope y'all listening. But the hyacinators is coming on good, growing good, putting on blooms, putting on little tomatoes. Up next is the roaster tomatoes. Again, all three of these is from Haas Tools where I got the seeds, but they cicada tomatoes. So anywhere that you order seeds that sell cicada, that's where they come from. Now these two on this end and the two on the other end, they ain't got no tomatoes on them yet and they ain't started blooming yet, but them aroma tomatoes. And the aroma tomatoes, they really like a lot of higher heat, I say, or hotter heat. They like it to be hotter before they start setting. If them are good for making paste and stuff like that. All my marigolds down through there, guys. Somebody asked me on one of my videos, why so many marigolds? You like them? Well, I guess I do like them. <laughs> I started these from seeds in the greenhouse, and I got marigolds planted around every tomato. And that's there's the leftovers planted out there. And I got them planted in pots all different places around the homestead. So, yeah, I guess I can say I like marigolds they good for the pollinators trying to get all the pollinators I can get now I'm looking out there y'all see that white box in the tree that's a bee box and it has a few bees in it but I don't see bees in my garden I still don't see them honey bees in the garden and that box has bees in it this here is the upside down super sweet 100 tomato. I was just growing for the fun of it upside down. 
again, I don't see the reasoning behind it. And I'm going to show y'all here in a moment another Super Sweet 100. And y'all look at the difference in the growth of it being in the ground and in this one being in this pot. Like I said, I don't see the purpose of this. I'm just doing it for the fun of it. And guys, I wasn't going to show none of the inside garden today, but I'm bringing y'all over here to show y'all this super sweet 100 over here. This one over here is getting up very close to five foot tall. Ain't got no little tomatoes on it yet, but it's starting to make some blooms. And I pulled several suckers off of this one starting out because I didn't want it too jumbled up, but it's going to be a cage full, it looks like. So now I'm finna cut this cauliflower, guys. Like I said, this video's a little messed up, and I think I'm telling y'all right here that I ain't even going to get to enjoy eating this cauliflower because I'm scheduled for a colonoscopy in the morning. So I'm going to be you do and you know what the rest of the day and the night. <laughs> so we're going to get it up here and get it cleaned off and show y'all what she looks like. Hey right, guys, I'm struggling with this video between my microphone battery being dead. I went back out there going to try to redo some of the video. Then it started raining. So I edited part of my video and started putting it together. So I'm just going to finish it sitting here at the table. But this right here, guys, is the head of cauliflower that we just harvested a few minutes ago. And like I said, I'm sitting here wanting to eat this with me some ranch dressing. But I'm going to have to start taking that bite stuff for a colonoscopy in the morning. So I know I don't need to eat this. But man, I sure want to. But that is the amazing cauliflower. Depending on where you look, I say 75 days. It's according to where you're ordering the seeds at. They got anywhere from 68 day maturity to 75 day maturity. But the other one I come across is a Corona hybrid cauliflower. And it's a white cauliflower. Now, the amazing cauliflower, don't let me forget, the reason I chose it, and I think it does good, it is heat and cold tolerant. But the Corona cauliflower that I come across, again, depends on where you get the seeds from. It says anywhere from 33 to 36 day maturity. So I just say 35 day maturity on it. That's pretty quick. The snowball says 55 day maturity on it. So I'm probably going to get the Corona seeds and the Snowball seeds and I'm going to try all three of them side by side even this fall and then again in the spring and see which one I think is the one I want to go with. Cause when I come across the amazing cauliflower and I grew it that spring I'm like well I may not can grow it as big as its potential can be, but I can grow it enough that it's big enough to eat. And that's the one I've been sticking with. But like I was saying earlier in the voiceover, if you like cauliflower and you like broccoli, and you having trouble growing broccoli, guys, this year when I grew that asperbrock that's growing out there right now, we are dearly loving it. Cause when it starts growing, when it first makes a little head in the center, I cut it. Some of the little heads wasn't big as a quarter, some was a little bit bigger round, but it don't matter. You cut enough of it, you got something to eat on, snack on, and once you do that, then it starts making broccolinis. And it's been making plenty for us, and it's been doing good. Cause every time I've ever tried to make broccoli, fall or winter, it either gets too hot too quick in the spring, I said fall or winter, but I meant spring or fall. In the spring, our temperature gets too hot. All I'd get is little bitty heads, which they still taste good and stuff. But it, it just took it too long to do that to where the broccolini, you can cut that little head off and it starts making the broccolinis 
stick out and it's just been working out great for us. So if you're having trouble, maybe your coal's coming too early or your heat's getting hot too quick and you ain't never dried that one. That one's called the Aspabrock. I don't know if the other ones, I'm sure the other Broccolinis is the same thing, but that one is sold under Aspabrock and I think I got that from Haas Tools. So far as me, my Katarina cabbage, we've been harvesting it. It's just a small head of cabbage, about six to eight inches in diameter. I may have one of them in here, let me see. Guys, I didn't have one in here, so I went out there and cut a nothing. But this is the Katarina cabbage, and that's about as big as it gets, about 10 inches is about the biggest you're gonna get out of that. But what I like about it is it's 55 day maturity. Now, since I started growing it and it worked so well for me in the spring and the fall, I've never tried anything else. It's so good and flavored, it grows good here. So this one, I ain't tried nothing else. But I am gonna try a different cauliflower now that I found me a broccoli that I think I'll be sticking with. Once I test them other three cauliflowers, I know amazing works. I mean, my goodness, what else can you expect in the spring in the south? <laughs> but anyway, I want to try them other ones. But that's something right there that y'all may want to check into is them three varieties. You can get them from several different seed companies, all of them. Like I said, the Aspabrock, I know I got, well, I actually, I got two packs. I got one from Haas, and I can't remember. I got a, another one from another company, another pack of it. But I hope y'all enjoyed this little video as chopped up as it is, guys, messed up as it is. It was a struggle for me to get this video put together, trust me, with all the issues I'm having. That's one reason I stay away from that little mic, even some days it's windy and I need it. Because, like I said, the battery will go dead on it, or you'll forget to reach down here and flip the switch to turn it on. Or if you stop to do something and you turn it off so it won't run the battery down, you'll start back video and you'll forget to turn the switch back on. <laughs> Today the switch was on, but the batteries were dead. But anyway, I hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time.